Some people have other ideas about when spring starts. For me, it's when I see the spring buckham bulletin come out. It's a it's a busy time for us when we start sending that bulletin out. Get a lot of different programs in there for the spring and for the summer. I can start reserving a shelter now, I see. Yes, yep, we started taking picnic shelter reservations on March 1st. And this year, something that's new is you don't actually have to come down to the community center. You can reserve them online from, from home. Just go onto the computer with our online registration system. You can reserve different picnic shelters throughout the park system from home this year. So, Or you can still call us over the phone or stop down to, to reserve them. But we take reservations from May 1st through September 30th. And full day rentals offered at all city parks for under $50, I see. That That's correct. Yep, and that includes all the sales taxes and everything that we have to collect on all those as well, too. So, yep, there's still a great deal to, to reserve a shelter for the day. My, oh my, that's for a whole day. For an entire day. Less than 50 bucks. Yep. I was shocked when I saw that. Yep, nope, they've, they've always been extremely reasonably priced, so... We just we want to make sure that people have the opportunity to get out and use them and and you know take care of them with us, and then they're available for others to continue to keep using. Yeah, I often thought about hosting a family reunion. We kind of rotate our Costfeld family reunion, and the last couple of years they've held it up in Grand Rapids. Then I thought about bringing it here and getting a shelter at one of the parks, I might still do that. We actually have a lot of family reunions. We do quite a few graduations at the beginning of June, right as school's getting out. Um, we have birthday parties and corporate picnics, and we've got groups that will actually reserve all the shelters, like at North Alex, where there's four shelters. They might reserve all four shelters and sort of reserve the entire park that way for, for big events going on. So we have just a wide variety of different groups that will, will rent the shelters. And when you're talking the day, it's from 9 in the morning till 11 at night? Correct. <laughs> right. and, and sometimes you get in there a little bit earlier than that. That gives us a chance every morning to come back in and go back through the shelters and clean them from the previous day. So that's why it says 9 a.m., but a lot of times by 8 a.m. you can get into them if you need to get in just a little bit earlier than that. So we work with, we work with a lot of groups, and our parks guys are really busy during the summertime keeping those up. They have to go through them and re-clean them basically seven days a week beginning May 1st all the way till the end of September. We don't clean up after ourselves? Um, some do a very good job of that, and some, some not so much. Okay. <laughs> it's appreciated I'm sure when you do. Oh absolutely, absolutely. You know the majority of the people do a really good job with it. It's every once in a while you get a little vandalism in there, somebody will break a couple of bottles or something and then you got a lot of cleanups, you don't want the glass laying around or They'll fill the trash cans up or not put the trash in the trash can, so they've got to get back in there and clean them up. And once in a while, depending on, on what happened, they'll have to go in there and hose them back down. But um, they, do a, they do a pretty good job of getting them cleaned back up and ready to go for the next day again. And how many shelters are there citywide? We actually have 11 shelters citywide. That the only two, and we do count uh, Central Park's Bandshell as a shelter, and that one you cannot reserve online, or Tipe Tonka, just there's a few extras because you need keys to be able to access both of those facilities. Okay, but I could rent it. But you could rent them, yes. So they're available um, year-round. There's four at North Alex, there's two at South Alex, Two Rivers Park, uh, Slevin Park, Maple Lawn Park, Tipe Tonka Park, Central Park, Wapakuta Park, I remember them all here. I feel like I'm forgetting somebody's out here, but there, oh, there's, okay. a, there's 11 of them. 11 of them. Yep. So again, you can go online on your website. Correct. You have pictures of all. We have pictures of just the ones at North and South Alex oh, at the okay. time. We're, we're slowly getting the rest of those all added in there, so they will be there eventually. But um, yes, and then uh, the majority of the shelters, um, are, are they don't have sides on them. You know, the only ones that do are a couple of them left at, there's three of them at the current time at North Alex that still have sides on them, but by the end of the summer, there'll be two with sides on them. Yeah. We'll the be replacing one of them. Full day rental, folks, is $49.39. That's what yep. taxes are. Pretty include. reasonable. Pretty wow. reasonable. that's more than pretty reasonable. It's so, incredible. Yeah, we do probably close to 300 rentals a summer. I can see why. Yep. It's a very reasonably priced package. We're going to talk more with Paul about the Buckham Bulletin, which is out. You should have received it. If not, they do have a, you know, a link on their website. When AM Minnesota continues, 507-676-7767. And Bart Jackson Insurance Agency, downtown Faribault. Bart, happy to customize the right insurance coverage for you, specializing in farms and businesses. 
agro-counter crop management specialists, your pioneer sales representative in the Faribault area, and Warner Farm Seed in Dundas, also our KDHL agro-boosters. In Paul Podonsky is in studio today. He's the city's Parks and Recreation Director. The Buckham Bulletin came out last week, wasn't it? Correct. Uh, actually, at the very end of the week previous to last okay. week. So some people may have got it at the beginning of last week. Right. And if, if somebody didn't get it and lives in the Faribault area? They can either look it up online or they could stop at the community center and pick another one up or give us a call down to the community center and we'd be happy to mail them another one. Although they probably should have. I see you have a circulation of 15,000. Correct. We uh, Everybody it, within the Faribault School District area should have gotten one in the mail because they go out in the mail and we actually go outside the city limits and, and everybody in the school district should have received one in the mail um, end of last week, beginning or end of two weeks ago, beginning of last week. Do you have a new registration system? We do. We actually got into that uh, last fall. It's been a lot of work for the staff. The staff has done a great job. It's you, know, you, you look at them and you think, well, we've had a registration system for 10 years, 15 years. It shouldn't be that bad to roll into it, but they're totally different. So you had a lot of setup and then all the little kinks you run into. But a uh, staff down at the community center have done just a fabulous job of working through all of those and and keep pushing the company that we bought the software from to keep making a few little changes for us here and there so that it works the way we want it to work for us. Sure. But so it's it's been working very well. More efficient than the old system? Oh, and, and it does a lot more. We're able to send out email confirmations. We weren't able to do facility reservations on the old one. You can actually look those up online now and take reservations on your own online. Um, you can look up your own accounts online now so you can see exactly where you're at. Um, you can see you, you can see a lot of information out there from the user's end that you could never see before. And then from our end, we can run a lot of different types of reports and track. I'll do a lot more tracking. Uh, people that are coming in instead of for the, when they purchase punch cards from us, we used to have uh, physical punch cards and now they're electronic punch cards. So the, the computer system keeps track of all that, which then also takes that information for everybody that's got the insurance programs and you have to send those into the insurance companies every month it automatically tracks all that for us. So it's saving a little bit of time as well as it goes through that entire process. Sounds like a benefic beneficial item for those that need that service. Yes, it's been a very, <coughs> good, been a very good program for us. <coughs> um, we're excited to have it and it's, it's actually one of the, from the, the a lot of the different park and recs from around the state, it's a lot of park and rec departments have picked this particular program up. It's similar to the one we had before. It's the same company. It's their their newer version of it. So it was a, just a major upgrade for us is what it was. So we did not change companies. We just upgraded to their newest version. Tell me about the Silver Sneakers. Silver Sneakers is one of our programs that, uh, um, you, one of our insurance companies that we work with. And if you come in and work out, um, you get insurance reimbursements. So a lot of times you can be working out for close to zero if you come enough times during the month there then. So um, your insurance company pays all your, all your fees and we do all the tracking and all the paperwork for it. And we just encourage you to show up and, and, and use that. There's a lot of different insurance companies out there that have different types of fitness programs tied to them. And this is just another one of them, so. It says here, older adults doesn't have an age, is it? I, I believe the, the Silver Sneakers is for um, people that are um, um, retired. And then they have another program uh, along with the Silver Sneakers. And I, to be honest, I don't remember what that one's called for younger people sure. that actually have insurance plans. So I think that's one that's when they're mostly on Medicare is the Silver Sneakers program. Okay. So there's, but there's uh, uh, Denise Hansen, our, our secretary at the community center, she does a fabulous job of keeping up with all of these. There's a, a, quite a few different programs that we um, offer um, through all the different insurance companies stuff out there. So it's a lot, of, a lot of book work on her end to keep track of all the different ones and where everybody's at. And that's where this new registration program helps us out a lot. So there's a lot of information in there about Riverbend Nature Center, the Paradise Center for the Arts is included in the Buckham Bulletin. Correct. We're always looking to add other events in town. Uh, along with those those facilities, we're also looking at just different uh, programs and different things that people are doing this summer. So there's a lot of runs and walks in here. So if you've got a, 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 an organization that's got a big event, we'll have another bulletin coming out in mid-May and we'll be looking to add and fill it up for the summer months there. So lots of different information in here. There's a couple in here like Heritage Days has got a little bit of information in here as you start getting ready so you can start locking those days into your calendars and the look at all the different parade, stuff I going see. on. Pet parades in here, you bet. 
Pet Parade's got a, a, a the new theme this year, Blast Off to Outer Space. So that'll be on Thursday, August 2nd. Um, just, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of fun stuff in here. Got a couple of new programs in here this year too. We're going to try a, um, you've heard of mud races. We're going to do, we believe that that's a, a patented or a, um, copyrighted name. So we're, we're calling ours the Muddy Mile. And it's going to be down at North Alexander Park, down on the backside of the Aquatic Center. And they're, getting, they're in the process. The Parks Department is working with our aquatic supervisor and our youth recreation coordinator. And they are making a bunch of uh, obstacles to work through with the obstacles. And they'll be digging out a pit and filling it with water. So you'll be climbing through mud holes. And it should be a fun day for, for kids ages 5 to 14 to come down and give it a try. So we're, we're pretty excited for, for something new and different like that. Yeah. What else you got new? Um, new this year, um, we've got a number of, uh, of food classes this year. Ramon from down at Rough Acres, he is going to be offering a number of different classes with us this year. So um, just look those up in the bulletin. I believe he's offering at least one a month for us. So we're excited to, to, to have all of those go down there. Um, those should be, should be fun on there. Uh, on the adult softball side, we are looking, we've had a fall co-rec softball program for a long time. And the new board of directors for the softball association, they they are really pushing to get a summer co-rec um, league going this summer. So in all my years here, and all the years that I understand softball has gone on a fair, but we've never done a summer league. It's just never been able to go. But they're really pushing for that now. So that'll be on Thursday nights this summer if we can get enough teams to to participate in that. So if you've got any interest at all, please contact us and get some more information from down at the community center. And we look forward to. To, to putting on another night of adult softball down at, the, yeah. down at North Alex. I'm guessing it wasn't done before because you just didn't have the, the space. In the earlier years, you're correct. It was a couple of nights of men's leagues and church leagues and women's leagues, and it filled up Monday through Friday yeah. on all those and then with all the weekend tournaments. So as the leagues have slowed down a little bit, and like men's is all on Friday nights now, um, women's is all on Wednesday nights and um, churches on Tuesday nights. You know, we Thursday nights were open for us, so we're looking to push the co-rec back onto those nights and then still run tournaments on the weekends down there. So, busy you time. A, you have a senior league? Um, we do not, but I know that through the senior center, they have offered some where they go and do play other towns, other senior centers and stuff, so you could contact the senior center on that one. They play actually daytime games, or like late mornings, mid to late sure. mornings, and then they have a little social time afterwards. So. Well, most of those people are retired. Yep. Yep, they're participating in those, so so that's a lot of fun. Sounds like it. So, um, and, and right up your alley, Gordy, they're still working on, last week they were out at Belfield, working on Belfield, they're putting railings back up. We had done a lot of work late last fall, so the railings went up along the grandstand, on the inside of the grandstand, and up the uh, um, access into the grandstands with the, the new ramp that went in. So that all went on last week. Um, Baseball's not that far away. I think the first no. game's only about two and a half, three weeks away here right now. So they'll be off and playing with the high schools. And I think the Lakers schedule shows them playing an early game in yeah. March here as well, too. So they're off and running. And we're working with a, a group, and we're going to continue to try and make some adjust or some uh, improvements down there. We're hoping to do some aesthetics this year. Last year, a lot of it just made it ADA accessible. So we've gotten it that way now, and now hopefully this year we'll make some changes. So the big green grandstand hopefully will make we'll put some changes in that, and then replace all of the outfield fence. Right now, a lot of those vines that are hanging on it is probably what's keeping the fence from falling down. Oh wow! <laughs> the the fence is in pretty tough shape. It's um, anytime that we have a big issue, the fence you got we've got a lot of work just to maintain the fence. So we'll be out there putting the fence back up and and straightening things out and stuff. So that's the original fence. From what we can tell, yes, in, in a lot of areas. I mean, there's been a couple of areas where it's had to be replaced, but right. the majority of it is original fence from, from what we know. So that's putting you back into the 50s. Yeah. I'd say we got our life out of it. We got our life out of that fence, especially when you got people diving after balls and climbing over the fences and doing everything else and all those vines crawling through them all the time. So, yes, I, I believe we did as well. So it'll be ready for the opener. Bellfield. It should be. Um, I think there's still going to be some improvements on the back side of the band shell that won't in involve play at all um, that aren't done yet. There's still going to be some turf going down, but we'll be have to wait until the weather warms a little bit more for that. But there is a walkway, so we'll be roping it off a little bit, encouraging people to just stay on the sidewalks. Don't don't wander around in the dirt because I'm guessing as the frost comes out of the ground, it'll be a little muddy out there for a little while. Yeah. So, but otherwise, yes, it should be ready for for baseball to get started here and. 
and I, I'm not sure exactly when uh, they start their spring sports as far as uh, practices and stuff. Today. Pro- today. Yeah. So th- th- they'll be ready to go out there. <laughs> yeah. Pitchers and catchers are starting today. Okay. So That's something. Yeah. Seems Snow's seem, not even gone yet. This might be one of those years. We've had other years like that where snow stays clear into April. So, Although they're saying by the end of the week, most of it should be gone this week, or a good chunk of it anyhow. So, oh, really? So I we'll see. That. That's we'll great. See. So, um, Along with that, I guess, you know, we just encourage you to just kind of go through the bulletin. We've got uh, three-on-three basketball for adults coming up. On um, Actually, if you switch to, like, page six, we've got a number of camps and stuff for youth out there, all kinds of preschool camps and young kids camps, um, just to, there are a lot of them are one week camps, but then we've also got our fun centers that are out there and those run all summer long and we're going to run even an additional session of that in later August. Uh, usually by the time we get to that first full week in August, our programs end, but we're going to run an extra two weeks of fun center in August this year, just because we've had a lot of demand for something like that for the kids to do. Once we hit August, just about everybody's programs out there wind down. So we'll we'll keep that one up and running and, and see what we can do. Um, swimming lessons, you know, tons and tons of swimming lessons in the summertime, and we're going to be offering some swimming lessons back at the outdoor pool again. Um, we've done some out there, and then we go away from them and just... They're so weather dependent out there and the cold weather sometimes in the early morning. So we're going to try and do that again and get get kids signed up for lifeguarding classes and high school kids starting to apply for jobs and just keeping ourselves pretty busy and stuff with the entire aquatics program. Paul Bonanski is the City of Faribault Parks and Recreation Director, our guest this morning on AM Minnesota. We talked earlier about rental of shelters. Mm-hmm. You can rent the pool, right, the aquatic center for Absolutely. birthday parties or something? Yes, we have, a, we have a lot of different facilities available for rent, so not just the picnic shelters, but the aquatic center is available for rent. You can rent the gyms at Washington and the community center and the uh, Armed Forces Reserve Center. We've got classrooms available for rent, so we spend a lot of time working with different rental groups now. We've got groups that rent even fields out at the soccer complex. So yes, um, if you've got a a group that's meeting regularly and wants to reserve a rent, you know, give us a call. We've got uh, large groups that'll even rent the ball fields down at North Alexander uh, Park. If they're interested in wanting to have the fields dragged and lined and stuff, then you pay a rent to, to use those as well that way too. So we have, a, we have a lot of different facilities, spend a lot of time working with, with people that are, that are looking to rent and have full access to a different facility then. Well, what a great idea for a birthday party there too. Oh, absolutely. We get a lot of groups that, um, e- even all winter long, they'll rent like the, the classroom at the community center and then they'll have their swimming party. So they've got a place to have cake, but then they can still let the kids burn a lot of energy off or they'll go into the gym and do a lot of open gym basketball and stuff in there so we have yeah we have groups coming all the time the aquatic center we've got a lot of birthday parties that'll come out there um, and they'll use the picnic shelters and that way they can have cake and stuff with their kids when they're out there but they can burn a lot of energy off so if you've done the birthday parties it's good when the kids use up some of that energy I know when I was a kid our local swimming pool a little spring valley which was you know just under 3,000 people at the time our little swimming pool used to have water polo like every Friday night boy was that popular yep we've they've, we've gone through phases where that's been popular we do have water volleyball back at the aquatic center on a regular basis so have not done the water polo we're looking at adding more lap swimming there this summer um, we've purchased a couple of lap lanes to actually try and cordon off some areas so that we can do more of more of that this summer so and then of course we've got our uh, log rolls log logs that you can do log rolling with that We'll be moving those to the outdoor pool to do some events and stuff out there as well, too. So trying to do a lot of stuff and just give more and more variety for people that are looking for something to do. So <coughs> it's just uh, there's there's a lot going on out there and at all of our other facilities. And again, just keep an eye on the Buck and Bulletin. Keep an eye on our Facebook page. We're trying to put updates on that on a, on a very constant basis. So. Um, and, and then listen to KHL. We do some radio advertising as well here. So. Sure. Any new amenities in the aquatic center? Not, not this year. As we, as the city is going through the comprehensive plan that they're, they've been talking about. One of the features of that is a parks master plan, and we're hoping to get more direction on that. We did do a, a study a few years ago, probably I believe in about 2010 or 2011. We did a study at the aquatic center. 
Um, and they did talk about some different water slides and stuff, but you know they're a little bit on the pricey side. So at this point, uh, we've never pulled the trigger to be able to move forward with those. But we're hoping that through this comp plan and Parks Master Plan and the downtown plan that they're doing, that that is some of the stuff that they're looking at is some type of a new amenity, whether it slides out there or a lazy river or something. So. Um, we did add the, the climbing wall after that last study, which made a huge difference for us. We got kids doing those climbing walls all day long. So we're always looking for something out there because that facility, we're already in our 17th year now of the Aquatic Center. I was just going to say, it's been a while. And it's hard to believe. It seems like just yesterday you guys were shoveling the dirt to do the groundbreaking. I remember it vividly in my head. Yeah, I think, I think people that have watched that come to, to fruition and stuff out there, it's pretty amazing that it's in the 17th year already because it took a lot of work to get it done. You know, the people that helped organize and keep all that going. And that happened just shortly after I was moving to town. So they passed the, the referendum and then we had to get it built and then keep running it. So it's it's been a busy, busy place. It's been yeah. a great amenity for the community. And unfortunately of those 17 years, I would guess a majority of them hadn't been great in terms of, you know, financial you know, the first probably, when, when we had the first aquatic center out here, um, out basically out state here before Northfields and Owatonnas and Wasikas and Dodge Centers and everybody else's, yeah. people came from 50 miles away and participated in it. So they've all got facilities now, which so we don't draw from quite as far away. And then, you know, we seem to get through about two decent months out of the summer, and then the third one has not been good for a while. Last summer, we were having a great summer through the end of July, and it was our worst August ever last year. Very wet. <laughs> yep. And that just isn't, even though it's, you, you think, well, they're just going swimming, it was wet and a little bit cool, so people yep. just, it just, the participation was just not good last year. Right. So, so it's just the way it is. It's, it, you, know, yep. you, you don't do a pool thinking you're going to make a lot of money. Nope. And if you look around, I mean, everybody else is dealing with all those same issues too. So big and little facilities all went through those same strifes last summer. So hopefully this summer will be another one of the summers. It's been, like you said, it's been a few years since the entire summer has been good to us. Um, we'll just have to wait and see. Yeah. We don't have a lot of control over that now, nope, do we? Nope, we don't. So. <laughs> Anything else, Paul, before I let you go? Um, not really. Just again, just a reminder, just grab a hold of the Buckham Bulletin, go through it page by page. I mean, it doesn't matter what you're looking for. If you're not into programs, there's a lot of community events listed in here. There's stuff at the Paradise Center. There's stuff at the River Bend. Get out and enjoy it. Get out and do the trail systems. Um, if you're looking to participate, we've always got uh, different types of boards and stuff available for people to serve on. Um, we're just, we're always looking for somebody to, to help out with something. Uh, we've got youth scholarship programs if you're, if you need a little bit of financial assistance, so make sure you check with us with those with the kids. Um, we've got them both for the programs and for the Aquatic Center. Um, so we have a lot, just a lot of stuff going on within the department. So, you know, we're pretty excited with that and we appreciate all the work that our parks guys do. We've got six parks maintenance guys who keep all of the outdoor stuff up and running for us. So whenever you see ball fields striped and stuff, they these guys are working their tails off for us all the time and, and we really appreciate that. So So I suppose it won't be too long we'll be seeing the picnic tables and in Central Park. They'll all start slowly coming back out. We shoot for May first is actually our opening day. Um, but if the weather breaks, you know they, they really push to try and get some of them out but um, we do have about 38 parks, 39 parks out there, so it takes a little while to get them all to all the all the tables and and benches and everything set back up and ready to go and shelters back up and bathrooms opened up and it's a the guys spend a lot of time closing them up in the fall and open them up in the spring, so um, it's a it's a busy busy time for them. I'll bet. Is that the proper number of parks for a city our size? Um, you know, we'll find out kind of the parks plan, but you know, we have, the, the city of Faribault has always been good from the very beginning of whenever they did a development. We were, we were very progressive in the early, early years of having parkland dedication. Some communities have not had that and don't have near the number of parks we have. Um, we're happy to have all those little neighborhood parks because that's where people want to be able to just walk with their kids and be able to get to a park and have a place to go. Um, and we're also looking for the large parks so that you can congregate and you know you got the North Alexes and the South Alexes and the soccer complex. Um, part of the, the, the parks master plan will be looking at you know where is a good location to add another large park as the community continues to grow. So, you know, it's not something that happens immediately, but you've got to get some plans together and figure out exactly what it is you want to do with that. So, yeah. got to determine where it's growing too. Uh, yep, which direction and, and 
the way I understand it, Faribault's growing kind of evenly in all the different directions. So it's not like we're going all north or going all south or going all west. We're, we're growing in all kinds of different directions. So we need to find a good place in some of these large regional parks. It's okay if uh, you have to drive a little bit to them, but if they've got the right amenities in them for people. And the dog park. And the dog park. It's yeah. used a lot. It right? gets used a ton year round. We've got people in there all the time. And we, we appreciate, we've got some people that call us up on a regular basis with issues that are going on out there, and we appreciate the extra sets of eyes with that. So if you see something going on or if you see something that got damaged, please just let us know. And we, we do appreciate when people have done that. But that dog park, it is amazing the amount of use it gets. Um, we do caution people now as we start to warm up. You know, watch your dogs closely because as the ice slowly starts coming back off the, the, the pool down there, the pond down there, whatever you want to call it, we don't want them falling in and, and causing any other grief for anybody. So just be careful as the ice starts coming off both both there and, you know, as well as the lakes and all the rivers and stuff. So I think our firefighters are busy enough. They don't need to be pulling people in and out. So No, and usually you do a spring cleanup out there. We do remember, get, right? yeah, we get, um, we, we get some people that come out and do that. Actually, the last few years we have been using community service people, people that have to put in some community service hours, and we coordinate them, and we get them out there working, and they put in quite a few hours for us, keeping it cleaned up and, and mowed down, and it's been, it worked out pretty well for us out there that way the last probably three or four years. Well, that's good. So, yep, it's good, good use, good way to, good way to put in your community service hours working at the dog park. And that shelter's been out there how long? Um, since the first year. I believe we opened in 2009. So, you know, that was a PetSmart that paid for that, and we appreciated them putting that shelter in for us. So, you know, the, the users of the park just love it out there. It, we've got people that go out there every single day and have been there basically every day since we opened the park. So it has been a phenomenal amenity out there. We know this time of year gets a little bit muddy for the cars parking out there, but there's not really a lot we can do with that with new DNR rules and stuff. So we try and level it out and get some of the ruts out of there. But, um, you know, hopefully the frost comes out of the ground quick and we don't have mud for a real long period of time. Yeah, well, it's hard to believe that that's that old too. Hey, yep. thanks, Paul. Appreciate your stopping by. You're more than welcome. Paul Panonsky is the City of Faribault's Park and Recreation Director, our guest this morning on AM Minnesota. Tomorrow, John Dvorak from the Rice County Fair will be joining us. You're in tune to KDHL AM Faribault, Minnesota. Have a terrific day.